Hey guys, we're going to be finishing up our signup page today. To do that, we need to handle some errors, store our JWT token somewhere so when the user comes back to our app, we know who they are. And then also look into changing screens once the user creates an account. So first off, how do I know that we could get some errors? Well, if we look at our database model over here, in the user, we have a unique little attribute that we add on to email. Um, so if someone signed up with email twice, uh, we're gonna get an error, right? So if two people sign up with the same email. So let's console log what that error looks like when we do this. So here is what my terminal looks like. And there's also something a little annoying that's happening right now. So when I type my name out, so Bob, for example, and notice how it auto capitalizes. So we don't really want to auto capitalize emails or names. We want to let them capitalize it how they want to. Um, maybe name you can auto capitalize, but for this, I'm just going to turn it off. And to turn it off, you just say auto capitalize none. And also for the password, we definitely don't. I'm thinking because we said secure uh, text entry that it was already not capitalizing but now we should definitely not be capitalizing anything. Okay, and then when this is done, we're going to just see if we can get an error. So bob, bob at bob.com, bob. All right, so let's create the account once. And uh, I don't even see a council log here uh, of the response coming back. Okay, we do. So we get undefined. A unique constraint would be violated on user. Detailed field name is equal to email. Um, so here's our error that we got. I'm thinking we don't have any other errors that we're going to get. So I think it's safe to say when we catch an error here, we can just say no that the email is what's the problem. Um, otherwise, we might need to parse this error in some way, right? So like do error.includes and look for a unique constraint or something and then the word email but I'm not gonna worry about that I'm just gonna say I if we catch an error we know this user is already taken okay so what are we gonna do in that case well we have this errors thing in our state up there so I'm just gonna say this dot set state and we're gonna update this state with a new error. And I want to keep all the current errors. Well, actually, no, I don't. I want to reset it. So errors inside here. So what is the field that the error is for? It's for email. And uh, all I'm going to say already taken. So how do we display this? And it just doesn't like it because we're not currently using errors. So how do I display this message? So I'm just going to have it a text that pops up underneath email or maybe on top of email. And now I'm just going to say errors.email. And now I want to conditionally render this because I don't only want to um, render it whenever there's an error. So at the front here, we're going to say errors.email and we're going to do a ternary operator if we have one we're going to render it otherwise we're going to render null um, you could also do an and sign right here which is what we're going to do so we're saying we want this and this and we have some errors right now we need to import text and uh, destructure errors so let's get errors from there and at the top let's get text all right All right, so here we're gonna say Bob again. And I don't think there should be a problem with the name field because that didn't look like there's a unique constraint. All right, so it says already taken. Now, it doesn't really look like an error message, so let's make this red as well. So color, I'm gonna say red. So Bob, Bob at Bob.com, Bob already taken all right 
I'm just gonna come over here and change this to Bob2, create account, and nice, it went through. Now, we notice we're not clearing this form, so let's do that. And to clear the form, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say const default state, and we just wanna go back to what the default state is. So now I'm gonna have this state be equal to default state. And then down here when we're using this, so we just finished, assuming we didn't get any errors here. So let's say is submitting is false too, and we're gonna return. So if we get any error, we're gonna say we're done submitting, and here are the errors, and then we're gonna return out. Um, otherwise, so if we make it down here, we know we didn't get any errors, because we would've returned, so we're good. So here I just want to, we're console logging the response, and then I'm just gonna set the state to the default state. So now we should clear the form whenever we finish with that. Um, next thing we wanna do is actually store this token somewhere. So we notice we need to get the data and then sign up and then token. So response.data.signup.token. So this is the string with our token in it. And we wanna store this someplace where it persists. So when we close the app and come back, it's still there. And the way you do that is with something called async storage. This is uh, how you do it in React Native. It's very similar to how local storage works on the web. And all we're gonna do is set an item and get items with it. And notice how they have a wait out front. That is because you need to um, await it because it is an asynchronous function. So this is something that comes from React Native. So async storage. And here we're just gonna say async storage dot set item. So we gotta give it a name and they do a little decorator out in front. We can do the same e-commerce and I'm gonna say token. So this is us setting the token that we got and then clearing the state. So let's sign up with another user and see whether this is cleared. So I'm gonna say Bob bob at bob.com bob so we should get our error good and now I'm going to say this is bob3 create account and we're not actually console logging this so we shouldn't see anything um, here but it did indeed clear and the token should be set so perfect that's what we wanted to do and this is pretty much all we want to do on the uh, create uh, account page so the next thing is I wanna just push to the next screen. So we have this token already given to us, so we don't really need to log in after this. We just need to go to basically a home page or like products. So I'm gonna create a route called products and products.js is what we should call it. Um, and here I'm just gonna import React from react and we can actually just copy what our login page has because we don't need to fill it out right now oops and i want to just add this to our route over here so products and yeah let's add an s to that because it's just going to be a list view products create a new route for it. So I'd like to change to this page whenever I have a, a, a good sign up. So we know if we make it here, we, may, we had a good sign up. And by the way, we should await this. So we uh, wait for it to finish and then we update. And then right here, I'm just gonna say this.props.history. So history is coming from React Router. They give you this object in your props. And the reason why we have that in our props is because the sign up component is a route, right? So then we call the push function and you specify what route you wanna to go to. So for us, we wanna to go to slash products 
and I need to make sure I lowercase to that, and I didn't. So products like that. So now we should go over there. And uh, we should really say here whether you might want to also go to the login page from here. So we should just have a little something, a little text that says, or, and you have at the bottom here, login. And then our on press will be this dot go to login page. So go to login page. And we're gonna just gonna, that's not how you do that. And we're just gonna call the history function here and go to slash login. And or is not centered. Um, let's just text align it, I think. Text align center. Okay, so if we click login, we'll be taken to the login page now. And we can refresh, come back here, and if we click create account, when we fill out this information, we should be taken back to the products page. But before we test out and make sure create account works, I want to um, refactor text input. Because right now we are creating a function on every render. Notice how we have that, that, and that. Uh, this little lambda guy, when you see the arrow, you're creating a function. So what I wanna do is move them into their own class to avoid doing this. So I'm just gonna do it above here. Um, it might get mad at me that I'm creating a class, and two classes inside of one, but I'm just gonna ignore it. Um, and extends react.component. So what we're gonna do is move all of our logic into the render function up here. This will also reduce some of the code that we're repeating. And then we're gonna have an on change uh, text function here as well. All right, so this guy we're still gonna call and use, but we're gonna be doing it from that other function. So we're gonna copy him and move him up here. And now we're just gonna call text field down here. And the only thing I really need to give text field is what is the name of this field? Well, the name is name and whether it has a secure text entry. Um, and we're gonna just set the default as false, but I can copy this, paste it here, paste it here twice. So we don't need him and we don't need him. So let's give that a save. We're gonna get a ton of red and that is because we have multiple guys here. So I'm just going to copy this and ignore this ESLint warning. ESLint disable and we're just going to do this for the whole file. Okay, so we're going to come back down here. So we're going to have name, we're going to have email, and we're going to have password. And this guy is gonna be a secure text entry. And these guys also need on change text, which is gonna be this dot on change text. And we can copy this and use them here and use them here. All right, so now up here in this guy, what we're going to do is we know the name of the field from our props and everything else stays the same. So we're gonna get secure text entry also. Secure text entry is equal to, and we're gonna make sure this is a Boolean value. So this.props.securetextentry. So the bang sign, double bang sign out front casts this to a Boolean, and this should be props. And so when we pass it in as true, this will be true. And then the value here, we can actually just pass in from our props as well, I think. So this.props.value. And honestly, I should be just destructuring this because we have a couple different things from our props now. So we're gonna get the value, secure text entry, and then our on change text now is just gonna be this.onChangeText. 
So now we're no longer creating a new function, which was the goal of doing this. So our placeholder is going to be um, whatever the name is. So name. So let's grab the name from the props as well. Make sure we do a comma, and we're getting this from this dot props. So we don't need to do this dot props anymore there or here. And we don't want to capitalize any of them, so we're going to keep that static. The style is going to stay the same. And cool. So that's good. So down here, let's pass in the value as well. Oops. So value is going to be name. Value is going to be email. And value here is going to be password. Makes sense. We're just plugging in from before what we had. And then what do we do in this guy right here? Well, we just call this dot props dot on change text and we pass it the two values it needs. Well, what are the two values it needs? Well, first the name, which we get from the props. Um, and again, we might as well deconstruct this because we were grabbing multiple values. We don't need value or that, but we need on change text, the name, and then notice how we're gonna get the text from this guy. So text. So we're gonna call on change text, pass the name, pass the new text. So we're getting the text from the same place, text input, but now instead of creating a new function to pass in the name, we get the name from the props. So let's make sure this still works. Bob, Bob at Bob.com. Bob should get us an error. Perfect. So now I'm going to be Bob3. And oh, yeah, I already made Bob3. So good thing we still saw that. Bob4. Um, and it takes us to hello to our products and it looks like it created it. so perfect so we refactored our text field now um, which is going to be better because it's not going to re-render every time because of that function call and uh, this might be a case where we make this into a pure component to get even more um, uh, render I actually think we're going to turn this let's turn this into react pure component we can do a little test here. So console.log rendering and then the uh, name. So we can see when we're rendering uh, the text field. So here is email, name, email. So when I type name, we are rendering all of them. So this is what we wanted to avoid before. So now if we turn this guy into a peer function, oops, we should avoid that. So peer component. Now we're probably uh, over optimizing this because it doesn't really matter. There's only three fields here, but this gives you an idea. Nice, only the name field is now re-rendering, which is perfect, exactly what we wanted. This gives you an idea of a place where using a peer component and actually can improve how many times we're rendering something. All right, so that's all for this video, guys. I think what we'll do next is work on the login page and then go from there. That's it. Thanks for watching.